How's it going guys? Julian Bradley here. Welcome to another episode of Everyday Ear Training. Now in this video I want to answer the number one question that I got from the last video which was how does your one key learning method work for ear training? So in the last video I was talking about how I always transcribe every song in the same key which happens to be C minor and that this gives me a crystal clear picture of how music works, how harmony works because I have a database in my head of literally thousands of songs that I've transcribed over the years and they're all lined up in the same key. So by doing this it really teaches you the common patterns very quickly, the common chord progressions, the common bass lines, the common melodic shapes, and over time you just get this crystal clear picture of how harmony works. So I got a lot of questions about one key learning, how does it work? Does Julian have perfect pitch? Why don't we just use numbers? So in this lesson, I'm just going to address all of these questions and I'm gonna show you how you can use this method for yourself to get a crystal clear understanding of harmony. So first things first, do I have perfect pitch? No, I don't have perfect pitch. I had to work for my ear, I earned it. I have relative pitch although I actually have what I like to call perfect relative pitch, just meaning that I've trained it to a near perfect level. So I had to work for my ear. I'm very proud, it was a very special journey for me. And in fact, I think it means a lot more to you when you do have to earn it and you have to work hard for it. But so lots of people were saying surely he has perfect pitch because he's saying note names. He's saying C, G, B flat, C, B flat, G, F, G, C, G, 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 C. So surely that means he has perfect pitch. Well, no. I was just listening to the music assuming that it was in C minor. Even though I know it, the odds are that it's not in C minor, I'm just assigning a key to any piece of music that I listen to. So I'll listen to the song and I'll just say, let's just assume that this is in C minor. And I don't have my instrument on me because most of the time you don't have your instrument on you when you hear music played. And I'll transcribe it, I'll come up with a theory. And then when I get home later that day, if I want to test that answer, I'll go to the piano first thing and I'll play the notes that I had in my head, which were all in C minor and I'll end up playing the song in C minor. And you keep doing this over time and you end up with hundreds if not thousands of songs that are all transcribed in C minor. Now after a few months of doing this you get fairly confident that you know what you're doing and you start spotting the recurring shapes and melodies and chord progressions and the common patterns and you'll reach a point where you don't even feel the need to test your answer at your instrument. So you just know with 100% certainty that you're hearing the same four chord progression or the same pentatonic melody and you'll just reach a stage where you don't even feel the need to test your answer at your instrument. So several people ask me, why don't I just use numbers? Why do I have to say that we're in C minor? So instead of saying G, F, E flat, why don't I say natural fifth, natural fourth, minor third? Well, first of all, it's a lot harder to say natural fifth, natural fourth, minor third. And secondly, it can get confusing whether I'm talking about intervals or scale degrees because intervals and scale degrees use the same numbers and we're doing both in ear training. Sometimes we're listening to an interval and other times we're talking about which scale degree we are in the scale. So for these reasons, it's just easier 
for me to use note names. And also that's just how I think. I naturally am just thinking in C minor, so I'm just thinking G, F, E flat instead of natural fifth of some abstract scale, natural fourth of some abstract scale, minor third of some abstract scale. Now, not all music is written in one key. I would say about 95% of music is diatonic, which means it's written in one key. And really that's most of the music you're going to hear on a daily basis, whether you're at the grocery store, waiting in line for coffee, going to the gym. These places are going to be playing diatonic music. But some music is modal, like the Dorian mode, the Phrygian mode. So what do we do for these types of music? Well, when you get a mode or a different type of scale, you line every scale up from C, so you transcribe in C Dorian, C Phrygian, C Mixolydian. And then sometimes you get the harmonic minor scale. Again, line it up from C. So yes, you do sometimes get some pieces of music which you aren't going to transcribe in the key of C minor, E flat major, but for these pieces of music you just line them up from C, and really that's the bigger picture of this method, is that you're lining everything up from C. And then later on, once you've learnt everything from C, you can just transpose it all out into different keys from there. But so I suggest that you line up everything in your head from C, you learn everything from C, because that's how you avoid confusion in music. Most musicians are confused about music theory simply because they play in all 12 keys. They can't spot the recurring patterns. But most music is using the same recurring shapes and patterns, and the only thing changing most of the time is the key signature. So that's it for this episode of Everyday Ear Training. I hope this answered your questions. If you have a question, please post it in the comments below. I'm going to be using your questions to guide me with this Everyday Ear Training vlog. So just post your comment below. That's it for this session and I'll see you next time. And if you'd like more information on ear training, you can go to themusicalear.com. It's my website, there's a ton of free information. You can go through my free video series on ear training, which shows you how to practice ear training the right way and how not to practice ear training. You can also sign up for ear training email tips from me. These will be weekly emails which challenge you to transcribe songs by ear. And of course, if you'd like to take my complete flagship course in ear training, which is the Musical Ear course, you can sign up for the waitlist at themusicalear.com and I'll notify you by email when I next open enrolment. So that's it from me. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next session of Everyday Ear Training.